I, if I could have put my videos that I was showing young medical students in the late 70s, early 80s, if I could have put them on mainstream television, we wouldn't have a C-section rate like we do. Why? Because people would have seen women who were exhilarated by the energy of birth, who learn how to get up on it and ride the way a surfer will, will ride waves. And, and where we were in harmony with natural forces, which is that the power that labor brings, I mean, the strongest muscle in the body is now going, okay, time to go, child. You're gonna go into the world and this is how we do it. And if the mother goes, no, 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 no. Oh, well, now she's resisting it. But if she goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's such a difference between no, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. And people don't get how different that is. And so when you're going with it, um, it's a right exciting adventure and you can watch it in women's eyes when they go wow sometimes they'll actually go this is fun I mean people seek uh, adventure by skiing hang gliding all kinds of things that are way more dangerous than birth and they have no idea that birth offers you know pregnancy birth offer a great adventure of exploration uh, that turns out to be extremely enriching and really prepares for parenthood. And it can take a marriage. I mean, I, I sometimes see people who love each other's minds and I'll see a couple that's connected like this and they got together here enough to get pregnant, but they're not really together yet. And then birth can bring them totally together because they go, he'll go, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And he'll go, wow, um, I'm gonna be sure that I'm careful in how you grip my hand next time because you almost broke my fingers. I mean, they are so amazed by the, the power of the, the energy that comes from this woman. And you have to find, you rope for words because we don't have words in our language that really adequately express it. Um, and, and when they go through that, and then they have a midwife sitting in the room that goes, yeah, you're doing great. Every now and then just go, and they'll look like, ooh, is it supposed to be like this? And you go, hmm. And, and they go, hasn't it been a long time? Oh, you know, mine took two days more. Or, you know, when they just hear a little thing like, yeah, that's, that's how it is. That's how we do it. And can we go for a walk? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have to come along with you. You know, come back when you, you feel ready. Or, yeah, can we eat? Sure. Uh, what would you like to eat? Do you want to cook it or shall I? You know, I mean, just... It's like part of the day or the night, whatever it is. And then you go, there's a gradual understanding that happens with that couple. Oh, we're actually nature. We're actually part of nature. We're not separate from it. And that is so, that's such an important understanding. And I think in that, when you have couples that go through that together and the baby, they're all in the same consciousness and there's this euphoria that binds people together in the, in the most solid ways. Even if that couple later came apart, they wouldn't really totally be apart because they'd, sh they'd continued to share and treasure that. Very Pleasure cool. bond, absolutely. You know, in the 70s, I mean, the first birth I saw was an ecstatic birth. That was such a gift that I got to see that in that little school bus and I went, wow, I thought it could be good, but I didn't know it would be that good. That woman was, um, yeah, she was, she was so radiant, so beautiful. And I was transfixed by her beauty, actually. I had thought birth, I, I wasn't afraid of birth to look at it, but I had expected to see some things that might be a little bit disturbing. And I just saw the most beautiful unfolding of nature that I could have imagined. I'd never seen, you know, uh, I watched a turtle lay some eggs once. That was the closest I got to that birth before that. And, and you know, it seemed easier for her to have her, her little mammal baby than it was to watch a giant turtle lay 100 eggs on a beach in the um, coastline of Malaysia back in the early 60s. But um, she just needed someone there to look in her eyes, and, and uh, she was gorgeous. So that was a gift because, uh, you know, experienced the euphoria. It was the, a contact high that was unbelievable. And we didn't know in the early 70s what hormones were. I mean, you did know what 
adrenaline was, but oxytocin, we never heard of it. Beta endorphin, sorry, nobody knew what those were yet. Those researches were going on same, you know, through the 70s in Sweden and so forth. So, but you learn when you're with women and you pay attention to and you observe what works for them in labor, you, you're finding your way to helping the mother. I used to talk about attitude all the time. You didn't want to have a negative attitude. That's another way of saying you don't want uh, adrenaline, catecholamines, uh, norepinephrine. You don't want those. You want the calming hormones, which are antagonistic, okay? And so you want the calming hormones because that's what we used to call your, your muscles. You know, we, I was quite aware that we're, you know, 70% liquid. So you can be hard as a rock if you're really, you know, toned up. But when you're asleep or, you know, if the muscles relax, it'll jiggle like jelly. So you want to everything below the waist to be like jelly. How do you get there? You have to be calm, okay? You can't be scared. So then I would develop all these little tricks of how do we get there? Once it was telling a woman who was rigid with fear and her husband too, and I was afraid she would tear because the baby was gonna come anyway, I said, why don't you kiss him? So she goes, right. She turns to him and she goes, and he did the same thing. And I go, my God, they don't know how to kiss. <laughs> I had to wait, I had to instruct her for the next one. Open your mouth. She opens her mouth and oh, it's all different. So because she let go, first time she'd ever kissed him that way, turns out. Fixed their marriage. But it not only fixed their marriage, she got that bigger, ba her biggest baby so far out without a tear. And I'm, oh, of course. Now, I had to take it apart later and go, why does that work? Okay, good kiss, blood leaves, brain goes here. Okay, what happens when, with men, when blood goes here, erection. With a woman, her vagina swells and opens. And we're not talking about stretching. We're talking about the organ doing what it's meant to do. But that was what the counterculture brought was it put the sexuality back in birth. Oh, well. Now, even Michelle has some reservations about that. He thinks men shouldn't see that. Well, some men can stand it. Maybe his culture goes, Men shouldn't see that. Well, maybe not. Maybe they can be behind if there's any inhibition there, but have the men feel that energy. Whatever the culture is, that's fine, but I know men can be helped because I just know hundreds who've gone, hey, they can handle it. They know it gets small again. It's fine. <laughs> the fear of the open vagina is something I see that is like, scares men. It's easy to manipulate men and women with that. And I'm going, that's why I like my concept of sphincter law. Because I go, do you ever get behind a horse? If you're behind a horse long enough, the tail will lift and something about that big will come out. And just as soon as it's out, <laughs>